Hey guys, welcome to yet another Azure basic session. So in this particular session, we'll be looking into VNets. So I'll be showing you how to create an Azure VNet, how to create subnets within those VNets, and also explain you a little bit about NAT gateways. So it will be a pretty basic session as we already know that's what Azure basics are about to do. So in the future, I'll also be giving you insights about how to create complete architectures on Azure. For now, try to learn the basics through these as your basics playlist. Okay, so now without any further ado, let's start. And before that, make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss our upcoming videos. And also leave a like if you enjoy our content. If you have any queries, leave a comment down below and we would be helping you out. Now let's begin. So guys, welcome uh, to the session. So I hope you understood what you're going to do in this particular session. Again, it's going to be very uh, crisp and uh, to the point. So I'll be showing you how exactly we can create VNets and i'll also create another vnet and once that vnet is also available then what i'm going to do is i'm also going to show you how to do a vnet peering okay so connecting two different vnets and uh, so basically once it's connected the resources in these vnets can communicate with each other yeah so let's start with that so for creating a vnet it's very very simple first of all you'll have to use or uh, search for vnet or virtual networks and open it Okay, so over here you can see there is a VNet already available. So this VNet got created when I was trying to create this particular resource group. So this particular VNet is available in this resource group. And when I was creating a virtual machine in another tutorial, this particular VNet was created because you cannot create a resource without a network. Because without a network, you cannot run a virtual machine because there is no other way of it being created, right? It will not have a IP address if there is no network. So yeah, that's the one which is already there. Let's create a new one. So choose a subscription. I, I guess I've told you multiple times. Resource group, let's keep this resource group. We can have multiple VNets within the same resource group. There is no problem with that. And then uh, I'm gonna provide the name as uh, VNet1. And you can choose the region. So you can change the region or keep the same region in which another VNet is. So there are not any restrictions, but there would be quotas like uh, the VNet can be only uh, be there. Like let's say there could be five VNets in particular uh, region, and then if you want more VNets in that region, you can basically ask Azure in order to raise the quotas for you, and they will do it. Okay, so this is basically it, and uh, yeah, so this is all the things you uh, require in the beginning. So next, moving on to IP addresses, you will have to provide a range in which you want this particular. Yeah, so in which you want this particular VNet to be created. So it could be 10.2, 10.1. So uh, I'm pretty sure Azure Virtual, right? So let me just cancel this. Let me open it in another. Yeah, so over here you can see the address space for this is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. So even if we create another virtual network with the same address space, it wouldn't work because there would be a minor clash. Even though it's a separately logical network, it's better to give a different address space. So 10.1.0.0 slash 16 will make sure that 10.1 is fixed. So the first 16 bits will be fixed and the last 16 bits will not be fixed okay so this is the only part which will change so 10.0.0.0 which basically means 10.0 will be fixed then the rest will be changing so that's exactly why they are providing 10.1 over here okay so let it be okay the next thing you will have to create is create subnets okay so let's create the first subnet i'm going to provide it as public sub and uh, you can provide an address range 10.1.0 uh, 1.0 slash 24 five azure reserved keywords so make sure when uh, you do this thing so as i'm providing this this will usually be 256 okay so it would be 256 ip addresses according to this particular range 10.1.1.0 to 10.1.1.255 because now as i provided 24 bits the first 24 bits would be 
fix it it will not change okay so that's why and then uh, azure basically reserves five addresses for itself and gives the remaining 251 yeah so this is what happens so also we can try this so but the problem is this particular side of block will override this that's why it will not allow us to do this so this is provided do we need a NAT gateway no there is no NAT gateway is available so we are not connecting to it so why do we need a NAT gateway if we want to make sure we have a private subnet and the private subnet also needs internet connectivity in that case we would need to attach a NAT gateway to the public subnet okay so now we've added one subnet done let's add another one private subnet and i'm going to give it as 10.0.2.0 slash 24 sorry not zero this is one yeah so now it comes under the address space of the vnet and it does not clash with the address range of public subnet okay done so even here so you can create service endpoints right now or you don't have to you can just create the subnet yep so we've created two subnets and we've created everything else required and next security bastion host disabled firewall we can enable a firewall if you want to uh, and provide only certain ips to be available but i'm just going to disable it so keep everything disabled uh, tags if you want you can add one it's optional i'm just going to move ahead okay so we've provided everything all the information is given now it will just validate and if validation is passed then we can create the uh, vnet so once we create the vnet both the subnets also will get created with it so it's creating so now let it create and once the next page comes let's just open vnets again and create another one quickly so that i could show you vnet peering okay so i'm just going to name it as so let it be in the same virtual uh, resource group vnet2 but let it be in a different let's keep it in central us different region so you can see it has been successfully launched so let it be 10.2 So added review and create create okay so let it get created let's go to the other resource so when it has been created you can say it is within this resource group it is in the location and uh, it is this is the address space and we have two subnets which we have created you can see private sub and public sub uh, subnets but both are basically uh, not a private or a public subnet yet because to make this a public subnet we'll have to provide it internet connectivity so for internet connectivity we'll have to provide it a internet gateway same thing that gateway should be connected to this if you want the private subnet to access the internet otherwise it will not work okay so the main thing we wanted to do was peering right so now the second subnet is also created now let's look at peering okay so right now there is no peering requests or anything uh, so the peering is basically connecting two different virtual networks together so it's pretty simple you can just click on add and provide a peering link name so i'm just going to provide vnet one two uh, two vnet two okay uh, allow traffic to remote virtual network let it be uh, traffic forward to remote yes let everything be fine peering link name vnet two hello 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 uh, everything is fine the virtual network we want to peer is vnet2 so adding virtual network peering vnet adding uh, virtual network peering yes cool so here you can see it is connected peering status let's go to so this is vnet1 right let's open vnet2 and check vnet2 peering 
and you can see vnet2 is also connected but the, the pair is vnet1 so basically now vnet1 and vnet2 have a pairing connection between them so that if there is a resource let's say a virtual machine is running in vnet1 and a database is available in vnet2 the virtual machine can connect to the database without having to go to the internet they can directly go through the microsoft azure network in order to communicate with each other even though they are in completely different networks virtual networks okay so this was basically the session i hope everything is understood here so i'm just going to show you you can just click on this and delete it uh, just open it and then you'll get a delete option click on yes so one is done next just delete the next one too okay so that's it so you can delete it like this and pretty much virtual networks is done this is the basic again so this is how to create a virtual network how to create a subnet and how to can do a peering connection so other than this you will have to learn how to create other resources which you can launch within the vnet so we are already coming up with tutorials which is already available in our channel you can check out azure uh, ec2 uh, i'm creating a windows instance you can check out that and you can launch an instance within the vnet there is already a tutorial named storage account you can check that yeah so mainly you can check out the azure beginner tutorial which is already available in our channel which explains the complete process of creating an instance and you can create your own virtual network and launch an instance within that particular network so you can check out that video in scalers youtube channel so that's basically it for this particular session guys we'll meet you in another session and before i stop with this particular session i just wanted to give you another brief with the, uh, of the concepts of so you can see there is something called a NAT gateway right so you can create a NAT gateway and attach it to a public subnet in turn that public subnet will become a a subnet which will basically allow the private subnet to access the internet because the public subnet is available and the private subnet is trying to access the internet so it comes to the public subnet where a NAT gateway is available basically network address translation so the resources within the private subnet will not have a public IP address so they will have to get their private IP address translated into a public IP that's where NAT comes in network address translation it translates the private IP addresses into public IP addresses and then that public IP address will be able to fetch uh, and get uh, connect to the internet and get whatever data it's trying to get from the internet but using NAT gateway the connection is one way that is only the resources within the virtual network can access the internet the internet cannot access the private resources but they can access the public uh, resources so if the public resource has an internet gateway so that basically means it can access the uh, internet and the internet can access it back so this is basically a NAT gateway and there are more concepts which we'll be covering in this basics uh, session so i'll just open this i'll uh, i'll just show you guys what exactly we'll be showing in the future okay so one i talked about the nat gateway right let me open the subnet okay so one nat gateway right now we don't have any nat gateway and then we'll have to create a route table and in the route table we'll have to attach the nat gateway okay so that make sure the NAT gateway is connected to your public subnet. Okay. Uh, so that's basically it for this session. In another VNet session, I'll be showing you how to create subnets and how to create a complete architecture and launch resources within them so that you can create a complete Azure architecture by yourself. So I've already done one on AWS. If you want to check it out, you can check it on our channel. But right now, and in the, one of the upcoming sessions, I'll be doing it on Azure as well. And uh, so thanks so much for uh, attending this particular session. Meet you in another one.